Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stand Back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And y'all know when y'all hear that, that's my big dog, big Nate dog in the building, holding it down per usual. The man himself, the legend. All right. Over there in the uh 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 Mr. Fam you uh yeah, Mr. Yeah. Wild uh, in Texas. He tried to pull out that wild in Texas. That's hard, that's hard <laughs> to remember. It ain't it ain't like saying Dallas or LA. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Out of big city of Austin, it's like, wh- where's Wiley? Oh, that's northeast yeah. of Dallas. You know, just I don't be knowing where all, the, all these towns are. The, the, the yeah. state is too large. You know, my my state isn't that large, so I don't what? know. Huh? Washington ain't large. Washington's not that large, man. We go <laughs> five hours from west coast to the east coast. You can go. You can spend ten hours in the, on a on a road trip with Nate Newton, and you still not gonna hit the edges of Texas. <laughs> I hear you, man. You know I what I'm saying? Man. Texas is pretty it's, big now. Wow. It is. Hey, Nate, speaking on Texas and, and, and the state of Washington, I know last we, – we talked a little bit about hockey a little bit, right? And then right, in right. last series, you know, the Seattle Kraken took the mm-hmm. Dallas Stars all the way seven seven game series, all the way to the edge. Yes. And we did the same thing previously with – the uh, or the defending champions, okay, yeah. from from last year. We took them to the edge seven games, and we happened to beat them in the first round. One thing that you know about Seattle – is they gonna fight? Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. what Seattle franchise it is. Is they gonna fight, Nate? They gonna fight you <laughs> tooth and nail. They may win sometimes. Sometimes they may lose. But you know what you're getting into when you face a team from Seattle. That's right. Do you feel the same way about Dallas organizations? Not not always. Well, no. Why is that, Nate? Nah. Uh, it, we- it's just it's just the nature of the beast, man. Uh, uh, you know, Dallas, you know, uh, it's just, I, I can't hmm. put my finger on it because from Florida, overall, we one of those states where, you know, uh, we'll check you on that. We'll call you on that. We'll tell you, you know, a lot of years people wouldn't, wouldn't go see the Bucks. Yeah. And if you don't win, they're not going. Yeah. They're not going, you know, they got to see some type of, uh, some type of growth, some type of want to, some type of hunger. Mm-hmm. So you gotta see uh, some dog. Yeah, and I and I don't want to say that it, it's got to be like L.A. It's got to be glitz and glitter and all of that. But yeah. you gotta have some, you gotta have some toughness about you, man. To uh, you know, to to some states just ooze that, like Philadelphia. You know, you, yeah. you they're not gonna support you. I mean, they're but not gonna just keep. But my, you know, but my question is, Nate, like. And let me give you the reason, the background, why I asked mm. you this question. Because the reason why I asked this question, it might be a little, little spite. You know, it might be a little spite. Uh, <laughs> because the Dallas Stars did knock out my Seattle Kraken in the second round yeah, of the yeah. NHL playoffs. But the next opponent in the third round that the Stars had to face is the Las Vegas Knights. Okay, Las and the, Vegas and the Knights. Las, and, 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 the, and the Dallas Stars took the Las Vegas Knights to overtime the first two games of the series, Nate. Mm-hmm. But, but what happened most recently in the third game of the series, of a seven-game series, Nate? Right, right. The Dallas Stars got offered 4-0. Okay, what, that, what, what, what's the series right now? 2-1? 3-0. Oh, nah. Nah, man. Nah, it can't be like that. I mean, you, Nate, you not, go not, overtime, not, overtime, and then you just – Act like you exhausted. They just you laid like, it down. Yeah, like you ain't got nothing left in the tank. They ain't got nothing in there. They ain't got nothing. Like, like Major Mind Payne said, unless you can flip upside down on man. your hands, you ain't going to make it. Man, I'm in my Boston Celtics, man. <laughs> wow. So I don't know if the Los Angeles Lakers laid laid the footprint down for, for Dallas, but it's not looking good, Nate. That's all I'm saying. I know all the Stars fans was feeling good, and all of a sudden, now they down 0-3. Not only that, Nate. Let me tell you how flustered they got, because I know you don't. You don't. You're not keeping up with the yeah. hockey stuff. No. 
Jamie Ben is their captain. El yes. Capitan. Okay, right. you know that name. That's right. I know Jamie Ben. The Dallas Stars gave up a goal in the first two minutes of the game. First two or three minutes. Gave up a goal. Following that goal, Jamie Ben got in a little, uh, little tussle with one of their right. players. Right. Okay? The player falls on the ground. You know, he's on skates. He falls on the ground. Instead of just talking mess to him, you know what he does, Nate? What? He takes the stick, puts it in his other hand, and cross-checks him in his throat on the ground. Wow. He frustrated. Jamie Ben frustrated, man. Is that how you do it in the NHL? Uh, no. That that's is, pretty that's dangerous, man. That's what we call Bush League, Nate. You know how we yeah. call it some, some Bush League? That's Bush right. League. So wow. he, got, he got kicked out the game, Nate. They kicked him out the game. And I, I personally believe that he should be suspended for the rest of the series. For real? I mean, because that's dangerous, right? That's, that's kind of real dangerous. That dude. Yeah. He could have killed that dude. But I mean, I, I say all that to say, when I think about Dallas sports, man, I think it's not consistent. And, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm curious as to why each of these sports cities are either competitive across the board, non-competitive across the board, or some teams are good, some teams are bad, right? But you would think for cities like Seattle, cities like Boston, cities like Philly, there are cultures that that coexist amongst all the franchises, no matter what the sport is, where there's a toughness about them, there's a grit about them, there's an approach that, that they have to the game. And I'm wondering why that is not across the board. Here, here in Dallas, man, uh, I've always wondered, because when I first got to the Cowboys, and still some now, it has to be a team that is much better than the Cowboys before the stands are going to be full before the game. If they think you equal to the Cowboys or less than the Cowboys, it'll be middle of the second quarter before everybody's in the stands. Same yeah. with the Mavericks. Okay. You know, same, you know, I, I don't know how it is with hockey. I, but I, I see the hockey people like they be getting to the game hurt. <laughs> yes. You know, but, but it, even with baseball, even though the Rangers got a strong following, everybody just lollygags in unless it's the Yankees coming to town mm. uh, uh, or the Dodgers. Uh, and their fans and even the media are soft in the questions that they Ooh. ask. Hold on. What uh, were you saying? You said they what, Nate? Soft. I mean. Like S-O-F-T yeah, or S-A-W-F-T, yeah. like soft. I mean, yeah. Bro, you can spell it, <laughs> accent it, emoji it however you want. I, I used to be looking. Now, when I played, we had a guy like Randy Galloway and Richard Dent. These dudes used to, Black and Sherrod, he used to be, hey, man, I heard this. And I, they be fronting you. And they be yeah. in the, and they are said in a newspaper. And they, and they were, and they were, you know, but and today, I mean, it's it got soft over the years, you know. Where they have little inside guys that they, you know, they ain't gonna say nothing about. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like 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 Mr. Ben there. If that if what he did was bush league and below par, you know, I would want to know how many media types for Dallas that's saying, "Hey, that ain't right. Uh, that's a suspension." Nate, uh, at least check, check this out, Nate. This is how bad it got. Okay, and not only did he pull a Bush league move and could have, could have, you know, really hurt this dude, mm -hmm. but he got kicked out the game. Okay. Right. They got, they were getting blown out so bad and the effort level was so bad by from right. Dallas that the fans started throwing garbage on the ice. Wow. Did they had to stop the game? Clean they had to stop off, the huh? game to clean it up, Nate. So the combination of both of those things, the owner, the owner, CEO, whoever it was, came out the next morning and put out a statement. And the statement was to apologize not only for Jamie Benn, but also for what the hometown team crowd did to disrupt right. the game. Right. Mm. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> you know, I told it, it takes a certain... It takes a certain athlete. First of all, I'm, I'm moving to the side a little bit. I'm going to move this. The, the, 
okay. so far a little bit. It takes a certain, like I tell people, anybody can come play in Dallas, whether it's for the, the three major sports, baseball, basketball, football, and now that you're into hockey, hockey, anybody can come play in Dallas sports. Okay. I tell people, everybody can't play in New York. Mm. Everybody definitely can't play in Philly. Yeah. You know, certain players know I can't take my talents to this town Why? because the fans don't play. Ooh. They they demand more, they ask for more, and they want to see it. And they will take the blue-collar worker, a la Philly, they'll take mm-hmm. the blue-collar worker and, and, and live with that till they can get something better. Then to take right. the guy that's, you know, oh, well, a, a whole hum. You know, media going to ask those questions. The radio stations are, uh, they, 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 I'm going to tell you how good they are. As much as we hate Philly, their radio broadcast teams are always ranked amongst the, the top 10, no less than the really? top 15 in the nation because – they're going to ask what the fans feel. Okay. You know, they're going to think, you know, it ain't no. And that's, and that's, and that's, that's interesting, Nate, because I'm not sure if our listeners understand that there's a relationship between the media and the players and right. the media and the organizations. I mean, at least here right. in Dallas, they're pretty tight knit. Yeah. Uh, they still, they, they still have a job to do, but if I am a member of the media and you being Nate, you're the player, right. I still have to be cordial with you. So that when I do have some questions that need to be answered, that you're actually willing to actually answer them. Yes. Yes. I can't. The Dallas media doesn't necessarily drag right. the, the the Dallas sports icons. Right. They don't They're, drag nah, their nah, players. No. Nah. So what you're saying is in Philly and in New York. They don't give a dog on it's the accountability factor. Oh, yeah. I mean, because. Uh, John Wick. Better known as Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, hey, hey, better Ron. known as John Wick. You let him have two or three bad games in New York. Hmm. He can be out with his with that with that pretty girl on his arm if he wants. He'd be like, hey man, <laughs> you need to get off that throwing arm because them two interceptions you throw this past week. They'll be in the restaurant telling him this. What about about that Darren walk up to Dak in no restaurant trying to tell him about who he got on his arm, let alone why he throwing all these interceptions? You know, yeah. it's just, I mean. The thing is, you can't play everywhere with with that. Uh, you have to bring that high school mentality, and what I mean by yeah. that is not 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 that old bush league stuff. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about that determination you had when you was in high school about getting to the pros. As as guys matriculate their way up the ladder, they get in college and they get a little less. The desire is still there, but the determination. That I would do anything to get there kind of leaves guys because, mm. you know, the money is bigger, which it, it, it's all relevant. You know, it was big to us back then, but it's a certain amount of hunger. That, See, uh, I'm glad, I'm that glad you brought that teams, up. Nate. Some teams and communities want. I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I know some weeks back we, we met with a gentleman from the NIL uh, about, about the NIL, right. And right. the my NIL pay. And right. talked about how these players are now getting paid and the big universities are really, yes, uh, their, the recruiting has gone to a whole nother level because now the business asks, yes. oh, watch stuff that now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because business has got into a money's now into sports mm-hmm. and falling to the players at college, even before college. Right. But speaking directly about the college athletes, how do you feel now about these athletes that are going to universities Simply because of the name, instead of going to universities based upon their ability to develop and perform as players. Some of these competitors in high school or a lower level working their way up to high school and then being able to have opportunity to go to college, they're going to universities, even knowing that they're going to be second, third string, not even touch the field, but they want to just wear that brand on their chest. How do you feel about this? type of athlete now that exists versus the athlete that you grew up around competing against every day. And I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. If you are uh, a kid with no guidance, I feel sorry for you. You have no parents, uh, nobody that of authority that can help you. I feel sorry for you because when you fall, the fall is going to be great. 
Mm-hmm. It's going to be like an avalanche and it's going to pile on you. If you're a kid with some type of guidance, some type of authority, parents, that authority, wow. Are you really, are you really going to miss out on what this kid should be gaining as far as advancing himself in his career? Not football, but I'm talking about in his academic career or in the character of person he going to be. Uh, is this person willing to accept the responsibilities, which I wasn't as a pro athlete, and it took me a long time as a grown man. So I'm looking at these children now with a lot more quicker than I ever thought. So now what do you do? Now, when these kids start tumbling back to the crib and looking at you with that, you know, like a, like a hoot owl, what, what do I do now? <laughs> who, who, what happens now? I'm serious. <laughs> what do you do? And I, yeah. I think about that. And, uh, and, 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 and I know you don't want to hear it, but it, it oh. has no Christian base. Mm. No, no Christian base. Now we've now we got to deal with the mental aspect of this thing because they have no Christian base to fall back on. You know, yeah. no, no, no beliefs, no basic human beliefs of what's right, and no godly values of what's sure. right. So now For these sure. kids, and I'm talking about these two categories: those with authority, that's greedy, parents, mm. people of authority, and then these kids that just see it. I'm going to get my bag. That bag will get real empty after three years. Uh, if you don't turn out to be the kid you think you are. No, I think you're absolutely correct on that, Nate. I think people are chasing the wrong thing. And to that point, you know, you and I are both believers. The foundation and the principles are not in place. So right. they don't have anything to rest on. They're they're being they're being distracted by the things of the world. And it's taking yeah. them off the path that they're supposed to be on. Right. But even even before the collegiate level. Right. I I can bring up my daughter. My daughter is 11 years old and she's a soccer player. And at around 11, 12 years old, it starts getting a little crazy in the soccer realm. Okay, the soccer realm, it starts getting wild. You start you you be surprised. Now, these kids are getting recruited at 11 years old like like you like you in college. Like Nick Saban showing up like he's Nick Saban did that to a kid. Yeah, I understand. I believe I believe. Yeah, because you got all these clubs, and this is this goes across soccer, this goes basketball, baseball, at least here in Texas. Texas yeah. athletics and youth athletics are absolutely insane. So it's very competitive. And anytime you're in a competitive field and you have a lot of options, a lot of choices, teams are gonna come get you if you if you got some skills. To the parents, what would you say, Nate, to the parents that are trying to decide on where their kids should be in terms of their competition level that they're gonna be surrounded around? Uh, based upon their coaching and based upon their comfortable, uh, the, the state of, of being comfortable, right? Having to get out of their comfort zone to be in a more competitive environment, to be, to have that drive, to be challenged every day, or should they remain as a top dog or where they're at? I'm, I'm going to tell you this here. First of all, know your child. And once again, it's two categories. It's the supervised and the unsupervised. If you're a good parent or somebody of authority that care about this kid more than the glamour, uh, know your kid's maturity yeah. level. Uh, I see a lot of people advance their kids. Oh, well, I'm not going to let her play with the nine-year-olds. I'm going to take them to the 11-year-olds. Okay, now when they become an average person, what? how do mm-hmm. you handle that? Are you going to be that parent that sit down and, and try to explain to them why you're doing what you're doing and hope that they buy in? Or you say, okay, let me give her another year at nine year old, and then when she get ten, I'll take you it go. to the level, you know. And so it, it, you have to look at each child. Isaiah, I know you have people walk up to you all the time asking for advice, and I try to give this same advice: who, who, and what are I'm trying to put it right in English terms? Who, who is your kid? What is their mentality? Mm-hmm. How close? Are you with your kid? Are he, is she, are he a follower? Or is he a potential You're talking leader? about the characteristics now. So all of these things, yeah. Yeah, so all of these things come into place. I know your baby girl, she's excited about, and she'll buy into anything you buy into. Yeah. I can just tell that. She, when anything, <laughs> daddy's saying it, she going to buy into it. But a lot of kids ain't like that. A lot of kids are kid-driven. Where's my friend? I was kid driven. 
I, I, my coach wanted me to play varsity in high school, but all my boys was on JV. Okay. So for two or three games, I missed varsity because I was a, a, a you kid. You want to be with your friends. Kid, you know, I want to be with my friends, and we balled out. And we friends to this day because I guess they look back as a big new riding <laughs> with us. And I'm going to ride with you for, for so long, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, so you, you got to know your kid. You got to be linked into your kid with all these sports because I'm telling y'all, sports win, but go ahead. No, nah, no, nah, I mean, you're, you're hitting it on the win. head. I'm, I'm kind of curious because there's so many yeah. parents now whose kids are in athletics and you have these you have these these parents that are that are YouTube warriors now and they think that they can go watch everything on YouTube and all of a sudden be an expert to to teach their kid and know the what direction to push their kid. It's hard for parents in those positions to really direct their kids, I feel, effectively because they don't have an understanding of what's required to compete at the next level, regardless of what that next level is. If if you haven't been through it, I'm not sure that you can. This isn't all the time, obviously, right? Because, you know, somebody's going to say, well, I could do that. I would say majority of the time, I think it's hard for parents to understand the psychology of sports at the competitive level if you haven't been there. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Isaiah. I have seen some weird stuff, and I've walked away. Mm. I would say this a thousand times. Please know your kid. No way he or she mentally up above, no way they're at. Yeah. I, I've seen kids that were nine years old, had the ability of a 12 year old, but their bodies were like the nine year olds. Yeah. And you're trying to stick them with these 12s. And I'm talking about tackle football, and I've seen this, and I'm looking at, okay, just let this kid grow a little bit because his parents, Develop. their parents, yeah, I said, I'm like, wow, they finna ruin this kid. And, and before the practice was over, the kid over there shaking his head, and I'm going to tell you the story. I, I, let me tell yeah. you the story. Go ahead. Let me tell you something. I used to ride by this park on my bike years and years ago, and I saw this kid, man. Oh, bless his heart. Had all the heart in the world. I want to say he was about the size of your little girl, man. But a kid was like five inches taller than him, about 20 pounds bigger. And this coach was like, tackle him. When you played this past week, you got to learn to tackle kids bigger than you. And I and I was over there by one, one older gentleman. I say, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't going to work. That ain't right. Mm. He didn't know who I was, and I'm glad. He said, well, <laughs> you know, it's people like you that's always got something to say. You ain't out there helping the kids. Ooh. I say, sir, you know what? You right. But before they left that practice, I knew that kid was broken. Yeah. And I just said to myself, people, now nah, people are telling me, well, why, why didn't you take over and let them know who you was? No. If you're, if you're dumb enough to let your kid that's six inches shorter then another kid and about 50 pounds bigger run over yeah. your kid and you let a coach think that is cool. Well, you know what? You are a dumb, dumb. And I yeah. want to say something else, parent. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I said, I, I just, I just got on my bike. I looked a little while longer and I just knew that I knew the end result of that. That kid was going to go home and go have second thoughts about football when it shouldn't even be like that. And that creates so much resentment. From the yes. from the kids to the parent, because these parents are pushing their kids in a direction to your point. If you have to know your kid, yeah, just because just because you might be friends with another parent and their kid might be capable doesn't mean that your kid is. So pushing your and knowing your kid a and putting them in a position to be successful. But then secondly, knowing their limits, right? Knowing their limits, Nate. Dog, you talking about you're talking about physical limits, and you also hinted towards the mental capacity, right? Their ability yeah. to be handle emotional. Uh, distress, be able to have emotional intelligence, be able to handle the stressors that comes with, hey, you're now challenged, right? You might have been the top dog here, but now all of a sudden, now you're going to be challenged every day. How are you going to respond to that? 
are are you putting them in an environment to simply just respond to that? Are you putting them in an environment to learn how to how to acquire that new characteristic? There's there's yeah. so much that goes wow. into it, man. Um, and it's just unfortunately everybody doesn't see it that way. You, you know, I had friends around me, man. I, I'm telling you, man, my baby boy Trey had stopped football, and I remember his first concussion. I wasn't intelligent enough to even understand that he was at. But uh, one of my friends said, Nate, no, 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 don't put him back in here. That ain't your son is tough. Something ain't right. And that's when I noticed he had his first concussion when he was a little kid. And I'm like, wow. And I, I, I look back to that like, man, it, it ain't just everybody. If you don't know yeah, and something go wrong, you don't just keep pushing your kid. This this is not college. They, they don't even know this in high school. This is not college. This is not the pros where the trainer can look at you and say, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You know, this ain't a toughness thing. We know you're tough. Let, let's, right. let's, let's sit over here and get some things going. And luckily, the guy told me to set my baby down, and he gathered himself because he was crying. I'm like, man, you just get, you know. And I look back now, and I said, God, forgive me. And, I, and, I, and that's, that's when I just looked at, after I saw what happened to my kid and got some knowledge, then I seen this kid, you know, what? I said, you know what, you know, I wasn't a Christian then, so I didn't pray or nothing, but I just shook my head like, wow, they're breaking their own hmm. kid. Yeah, you know? it's unfortunate. And so um, yeah. this is this Dang. is the thing I'm going to say right here. How in the world? See, when you're a fan, I love this. You pay your money. You make your sacrifices. I love this. But when you're a parent or a guardian, of someone, how can your competitive edge that burns in you, how you gonna let it kill this kid or wreck this kid? Your competitive edge and lack of knowledge gonna wreck this baby. Wow. How did you, man, that's that's deep, Nate. <laughs> how did you not, because I struggle, I, uh, I don't want to say I struggle. I have to temper my competitiveness when it comes to my kids. That's right. Because I I don't I think I was in a different category of competitiveness. I just yeah. and I and I gotta say I say past tense because that's when I was being actually athletic. And these hamstrings won't let me live no more. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still a competitor in absolutely everything that I do, and you know that. Right. But how did you separate the expectations that you had of yourself and not put those off? on your kids when they were not ready to take on that responsibility. And that's hard. We, we compete at the highest level. My, my oldest boy, he, he was, he, he, he burned, he, he burned harder than what I did. He, he was way more competitive than me. I was just a big fun loving God gifted <laughs> athlete. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't get to competitive. Until I kind of got in, uh, got it with, into the pros. That's when right. I really got it competitive. Is, but I was just God gifted, but uh, my son, one went to Texas, he was really competitive. My baby, who went to UT San Antonio, he thought he was uh-huh. competitive until it came time. We need to work out or we need to do extra. <laughs> Inconvenient. <laughs> the, the edge wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was a but, convenient competitor. Yeah, yeah. And so, but what, what I wanted for my kids, if they were athletically gifted, like both of them were, I needed them degrees. And I told my babies, I needed them degrees. I say, do what daddy didn't do. Daddy didn't get his degree. Man, if y'all want dad to be always loving on y'all, get your degree. I said, because to be honest with you, son, besides you being my son, and I'm proud and I'm glad that God allowed you to come to us. Besides that right there, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do what daddy didn't did. I mean, right. The percentages, you got a better chance of winning the lotto. Once, two, <laughs> three Super Bowl, uh, okay, all pro, okay. So yeah, you, yeah, it ain't yeah. much you can do that's going to knock daddy out of his socks besides you it being you, my kid. But Correct. one thing you can knock daddy out of his socks with, get that degree and treat people yeah. with respect. And, and and both of them did it. And, that's awesome. Yeah, and, I, and that's what I love on. And that's what I preach on. All the time. Yeah. 
I know one of the things that I that I kind of coach on before we get out of here is just, you know, to that point, you know, we were blessed enough to be gifted yeah. with talent, but also be gifted with a drive and a work ethic that allow for us to play at that next level. And, you know, you and I both won Super Bowls. You won yeah. many more than I did, but we both were well, successful we got to the highest. We got two or three of them among us, huh? Yeah, yeah, man, I'm trying to tell you, team, man. Yeah. So <laughs> what, getting to that level, our expectations, our expectations are naturally higher. Yes. Naturally, especially for our seeds, especially for our kids. Yes. And the hardest part, I think, at least for me, is that we have so much foresight because of our previous experiences. We we can see down the road. And by being able to see down the road, you know what's required right now. Yes. And you, you know, you had these conversations. I'm not sure what your what your kids' aspirations were at that time, but you have these conversations like, hey, what do you want to do? You know, how serious are you about Trade this? New. And if you want that, huh? Trade new, bro. Trade new. Go you ahead know? On. Trade new. Yeah. So King thought he knew. But trade new. Bro. Okay. Huh. So you have those conversations and like, because you have that foresight, you're like, okay, now let me help you with your psyche and let me help you put you in a situation to be successful, whatever it is. And you have these boxes that need to be checked, man. And it's like, it's hard to separate the things that we did and that we knew was, was necessary to compete at the highest right, level. Right. And now try to instill those things without being overly demanding in our kids. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird dichotomy, man. No, it's not. It's, it's the me now TV, social media versus common sense. That's all it is. That's all it is. We got these, we got, we got these kids. And like you say, they, they can go on YouTube. I saw a kid on YouTube. This guy that plays football, runs track kid. I don't know how it got. I mean, young kids just 18 pack. Yeah. Just he's so much advanced. Other than other kids, I mean, okay. it's kids twice his age. He's just so much better, and then they showing all these highlight warriors, like you said. And I'm just laughing because <laughs> as great as he is, it's gonna come a point in his life where he's gonna run into about twenty thousand other great guys like that. And will he be the kids he running around now and laughing and joking and ah da da and making fun of and you know. I mean, he got flag football. There can't nobody touch him. Y'all, he, oh, he thousand moves. It's another dude over in the next county, or two doors over, that can do the same thing. Are you preparing your kid for when he run that run into that fate, that tough competition? Ooh. When he ain't that big dog, can You're he not get there. through the, Yeah, when he can he get through that adversity? You know, when make- he grow with the competition, when it when it catches up to him, because it will catch up to, to you. And they but. Ain't but one LeBron, and he had to learn. And ain't but, I'm saying ain't but one Michael Jordan, and he had to learn. So and we, they were brought up in a different era, a different time. But now who is the new kid? That, that's not going to be small. That's not going to whine. Who's not going to yeah. play every game hard. Sure. I like it. That's a good word, Big Nate. That's a good word. You need to put that. Uh, we need to go ahead and overlay the the cop song. What you gonna do? Well, I'll, 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 I'll tell when they that right come there. for you, huh? when they come for you. Yeah. Hey, I like that. That's good stuff, man. People need to make sure y'all digest that. Get your notepads, rewind it, go back and write down. We left a lot of nuggets in there from two competitive individuals um, on on some parenting tips and for all you young athletes and even not even athletes. There's a whole lot of other spaces Just that school, you can be competitive man. at. Just school. Yeah, school. STEM, all this stuff, technology. There's a whole lot of different areas that you can apply this knowledge. But that's going to do it for this episode of Let Me Tell You Some, y'all. Nate, dog, what did we just do? Hey, we just we rushed just... another one. That's it, man. We'll see Niagara. y'all next time. <laughs> <laughs> Not the other Agra, but Niagara. Niagara.